Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Expecting some rain again today. Uh, supposed to be in around noon, I think. So a little bit of thunderstorms and some rain, which we certainly need it and not complaining. Um, actually kind of looking forward to it. So uh, bring it on because we can always use it around here this time of the year. Um, apparently last night, uh, Donald Trump and Elon Musk did a an interview. Um, I didn't listen to any of it. I actually did try, just just as a, out of curiosity. And guess what? Apparently, there was some type of cyber attack against um, X last night, and it was very difficult for a lot of people to get on initially. I, I guess they fixed it, uh, but um, it was a lot of people. Apparently, I mean, I saw this morning that uh, Elon Musk is saying that out of everyone that engaged in that in some way or somehow we're talking like a billion engagements uh, already uh, that, that's that's crazy uh, but uh you know it sounds like a lot of things were said um always remember this with any politician whether good or bad what they say and what they do are two separate different things so don't don't forget that um but uh you know there was a lot of promises, a lot of ideas, some of them pretty good, some of them a little sketchy, at least based on what I could see happen. Um, is it going to change things? I don't think so, because I think whoever is going to be president has already been figured out a long time ago. And we're just along for the, the, the entertainment, right? You know, it's, it's, just a, it's just entertainment for the people. Um, you know, kind of like a gladiator game, but whoever is going to win and be the president, that's already been determined. Um, shipping prices are starting to go up. Uh, they're, they're reporting that cargo container uh, uh, prices are going up uh, to numbers almost into the level of what they were four years ago during the pandemic. So this means that prices of everything is most likely going to start going up again. Now, it's it's not that it hasn't been going up. It actually has inflation's gone up just a, a hair recently. But um, <clears throat> I think we're going to see some prices go up. And this makes sense considering uh, what's going on around the world with wars um, that, that are building and um, just the availability of things because of those wars, certain things, not everything, but some things. Uh, so, so we're going to start seeing prices go up. And uh, we need to get ready for that. You know, that's that's part of prepping. I mean, think about it. In fact, my wife and I, we've commented many times over the last few years of, um, you know, we'll go out to the pantry, one of us or the children will go out to the pantry to get something for a meal and we'll laugh at, you know, oh, <laughs> this can of whatever we only paid 79 cents for and it's $2.59 at the store now. Well, well, why was that can so cheap? Because we bought it before, before everything went up. And, and so we, we saved money that way. And if we buy things now to put away and prices increase again, which they most likely will continue, uh, we're saving money. So if nothing else, your food preparations are simply a way for you to kind of, you know, kind of have a hedge against inflation in a manner of speaking. So uh, you should probably be stocking up because, yeah, as as the war gets going on, the multiple wars, um, it, it does affect shipping. It will affect costs of, of, of things. Oil prices are on the rise. Uh, so, so, yeah, you should probably continue to be stocking up. Uh, I, I, I mean, there's probably some of you out there that are hitting maximum levels. Of, of food supplies and stockpiles, but most of you probably aren't there. Uh, so does it really, is it really gonna be a bad thing to have some extra green beans, you know, st stored away or an ex extra case of tomatoes or something like that? Um, you probably should. And you, you know, the, the availability of things are still sketchy. It's, it's still at times sketchy. And so um, We've not recovered is what I'm saying. So, you know, four years ago, everything went haywire because of COVID. Uh, we all know that. You all remember it, right? Well, we've not recovered fully from that. I mean, yes, things are better. Stuff is more available. 
uh, you know, if you go to the grocery store to buy your food, you're, you're probably going to find what you need for the most part. But it's not fully recovered. The whole supply chain has not full re fully recovered. And now the very strong possibility of a world war, especially on multiple fronts, um, Russia and the Middle East, and then quite possibly China. Because here's the thing. If the United States gets involved, this is a little, I'm little go down a little rabbit trail here. So just hold on just a second. Um, the United States gets involved heavily in a war in the Middle East and more heavily uh, in Russia and Ukraine, what in the world is it that would stop China from moving on Taiwan or North Korea moving on South Korea? There's not much. There's not much stopping that because if we're heavily involved in the Middle East and Europe, there's no possible way we could mount a good defense or offense over in uh, Asia. So things could spiral much worse than what a lot of people even think. But back to supply chains, already on the surface, like I said, they haven't recovered. As the Middle East and Russia and Europe gets heated up, that's going to cause a strain. It's going to cause a strain on global everything, right? Maybe not directly to us right away, but it will affect us. And then if China ever gets involved, it's going to just exacerbate everything even worse. So you know, between wars and reduced shipping, the flow of ships and everything. You know, I just was reading this morning that a couple of more ships have been attacked uh, in Yemen, some cargo ships. So you, things like that keep going on. It's going to reduce uh, the, the flow of goods. It's going to increase the cost of the flowing of that goods, which all of that translates to you are going to be paying more uh, and have less things available. So, you know, we, we talk about the wars and all this kind of stuff, which, and the, the repercussions of those, which are legitimate. You know, probably the, the worst thing at this point right now that we face from all of this is just terrorists and, and just bad actors, bad behaved people doing bad things here in the United States similar to what we're seeing in London, in, in the UK, and then just, you know, taking out infrastructure, things like that. But there are other things that can be very bad from all this. And one of them is just supplies, supply of goods. Every time there's a major war, uh, the supply chain slows down and the availability of goods slow down for multiple reasons due to said war. We need to start expecting that, start planning for that. And so part of your food preparations is doing for that, not just because all the lights are gonna go out or you know, Chai Com's gonna come parachuting out of the sky or anything like that. I mean, those are always possibility. I mean, no, nothing's off the table anymore, right? Uh, we, we live in the twilight zone, uh, crazy world, so nothing's off the table, but um, the, 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 the real reality of the things that we're really going to be facing is increased costs of goods, the less availability of goods, um, and your, your purchasing power of your dollar worsening, all of these things happening. And so we have to start getting ready for it. So stocking up on the things that I tell you all the time, I know it's a bore, you know, hearing all this stuff, you need to do it. Dry goods, you know, how solid are you on dry goods? pastas, rice, beans. Uh, I would look, you know, in, in my area, it's easy to get big bulk items. There's lots of uh, bulk store, stores within, you know, an hour or so drive. I don't know how it is in all of your areas, obviously, um, but there are places that you can buy, you know, like pinto beans and black beans and navy beans and those kind of things in, in 25 pound bags or 50 pound bags. Uh, look for that kind of stuff if you can. Uh, put it in some mylar stuff, seal it up, and, and it'll last for 20, 30 years. And and you can eat off of it a little at a time, but you know you've always got some food. Rice, same way. Uh, corn, dried corn. I would just go with dried corn um, because, you know, with, with food storage, especially long term on your dried goods, try to get the whole thing, you know, the whole, the whole fruit, the whole vegetable, the whole whatever, not something ground up. For instance, flour. Flour doesn't last that long. It goes rancid, gets buggy. But you can get wheat berries and grind that into flour. Now, of course, you're going to need a flour mill, but um, 
you know, I would, I would go with stuff like that. Put that stuff away. Make sure you have some canned food. Make sure you have protein. Uh, the canned tuna, the canned uh, chicken. I, I know they're, they're not always your favorite thing to eat. Sometimes you just want a big old juicy steak, but canned tuna and canned uh, chicken are great sources of protein. And, and the, the, when meat is stored in a can, it, it lasts typically five to seven years minimum. And it can go longer, but five to seven years is common uh, in, a, in a can stored properly. Uh, so make sure you have all that kind of stuff, some, some salts, make, always need salt, and get the good mineral salt. Uh, we use the Redmond's Real Salt, uh, but Celtic salt, salt works. Um, the Himalayan salt's kind of sketchy, depends on where you, what c company you buy from. You don't know what kind of harmful material, some of it comes out of China, so you have to be careful with that. Um, but make sure you get that kind of stuff lined out. Water storage. Um, three gallons of water per person per day in your household is, is, is what you should be looking on. Now, you're not going to be able to store up that much water, but two, three, four weeks worth of water is very possible. So I would do that if you can. Um, the bottled water, you know, the cheap bottled water uh, that you get at Walmart, you can get in the big cases. Um, a good rule of thumb is three cases of those for every person in your household. So if you have four people in your household, you need to go buy 12 cases. They're like five to seven dollars a case typically. So it's not too bad. Uh, water filtration, I mentioned that yesterday. Um, a, a, not a new product, a new product to me, uh, but a great uh, way to filter your water. There'll be a link down in the description below. Uh, and, and then medical supplies, Make sure you have that because, you know, things could happen. And, you know, with, uh, with all the stuff that we're seeing happening in England with the rioting and the violence and stuff, what if that's happening and it's just unsafe to get to the hospital? If the system gets bogged down so much that you can't, you know, that you call 911 and it's not available. I, I understand that better than a lot of people because I work within that 911 emergency system. And it's... It's not uncommon. In fact, it was just Saturday, Sunday, I don't remember, maybe Friday, uh, we were notified uh, through our, our dispatch that <clears throat> because of the strain on our system in the county that there was only one ambulance, one ambulance in service in the entire county for a, you know, a decent period of time. Thankfully, nothing happened bad that, you know, would have caused a strain. But what if there had been some kind of mass casualty event, a school bus or, you know, travel bus or something, and there was only one ambulance? It doesn't take that much to overburden systems. It doesn't even take the apocalypse. It can just happen. So would you have to be able to handle things, you know, around here. If something like that happened and the ambulance and all the firemen and stuff were busy on a major call and then your kid falls and busts their head open or breaks their leg or has a big, your husband gashes his leg on a chainsaw and you call 911 and there's no one available to come to your call. You better have medical supplies to handle that. Um, defense, you need to be able to defend yourself. You need to have adequate firearms. You need to have adequate amounts of ammunition. Uh, everyone in your family, in your household that's capable of shooting a rifle should have one and a decent one. Uh, every adult in your household should have at least a pistol. Um, a couple of shotguns would not be a bad idea, at least one or two. Pump shotguns right now are cheap. You can get a 12 gauge pump shotgun or even a 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun for less than $200 a lot of places. Ammunition, these kind of things are, are where you need to be going. You know, fuel for your vehicles, extra fuel for your vehicles. Make sure your tires are solid, your battery's in good shape, your belt, tune-ups, things like that. Uh, the, the things that you need to, to run your homestead. Do you have enough seeds? Do you have enough tools to garden? Uh, do you have a way to heat your home alternatively throughout the winter that's not dependent upon the system, like a propane tank or a gas line or electric wire? Uh, can you do it with a wood stove? I know this is a lot and I've seemed like I'm rambling, but I'm just trying to get your brains working, folks, because major, major wars, multiple major wars, economic depression, 
craziness in election and as this battle for, for power, not just here in the United States, but all over the world, the deep state is at, is at war. All of these things happening in a pot potential pandemic that they're trying to cook up again for us, it's a recipe for disaster. And so you really need to buckle down and be serious about your preparations, what you got stored away, what you're working on, learning your skills, uh, your plan, all that kind of stuff. We're heading into some, some rough times, folks, and you need to be getting ready. It's time to get your houses in order and to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.